My daughter's Ford Fusion, um, she started having brake problems and the brake light come on. Well, she checked the brake fluid, she called me, said her brake was, the light was on and the brake were, brakes were acting stupid. And so she called me and um, I told her where the brake fluid reservoir was. She got some, put it in it, and she said this wheel was actually leaking all out. Well, got it back to my shop. And this side didn't have a pad on it. The outside, there wasn't even a pad on it. So it's just ground the, the rotor down super, super thin. So I'm gonna have to change this rotor. This caliper, it overextended where the, uh, the end comes out and works the brake. So what it did is when that overextended, it, that piece come all the way out and it blew the fluid out this line. So I have to change it and the drums and or the brakes the caliper this rotor and both brake pads on the back so that's the project i'm on it's not glorious whatever but it's one i have to do and then once i get this out um, i don't know if i get to it tonight but i'll go to the drift car i've got to change my radiator so i'm going to finish this job and we'll probably try to jump on that but all right here we go all right so i got my daughter's car finished or whatever got the brakes changed I ended up having to put a caliper on the other side and uh, so I got the brakes done we're down to ready to put this Mishimoto radiator on the IS 300 I've got it loose at the bottom um, I drained it so we're ready to go ahead and get this one pulled out and, and hook up the actual uh, Mishimoto one. So alright, let's continue on. Okay, so radiators are pretty easy. All I've had to do so far, which it already had a leak, so it's drained a bunch of it out. So, if you don't have a lift, which I do, um, all you gotta do is lift the front up, drain it. You wanna take the cap off, the radiator cap, because it'll, you know, it creates suction and it'll drain it a lot slower. So if you take the cap off on the driver's side, close to the, not the, on the outside end, but on the flat surface closer to the end, there's a little thing you turn. Um, so let it drain. You want to drop it into some type of approved bucket. You don't want to drop antifreeze just on the ground or any of that stuff. Um, so you drain that. Once it's drained, you can drop the lower radiator hose on that side and move your container over to that side to catch that too because you will get coolant. And so once we get to the top, pretty much all you got is going to be this dude this dude and there'll be a couple of um, fan plug-ins and then this tube right here is I guess the it comes off the fan and it blows cool air into your computer so which is crazy because if those that thing spits water it's gonna spit it right in on your computer uh, but I guess that's the design so this thing they put some janky wiring on it it's straight wire to a fan switches so um, so this one won't have a actual temperature sensor so on this side all the way at the bottom facing that way there'll be one plug that's your fan temperature sensor sensor so if you're um or switch i think it's called maybe a switch but so if that switch on the bottom uh, if your fan's not kicking on it's possible that switch is bad so that's an easy change out while you're doing this if you want to put a new switch in if your fans aren't working correctly or something that's when you do that but these are on a, a toggle switch so i don't have to worry about that so once you get that far you just take this hose off and you've got these deals off the bottom hose off uh, the fan plugs and it should pull straight up out of there so all right let's finish taking that off and then we'll see what we got okay so this is 10 millimeter socket just spin that guy off that keeper and this one and that keeper and so they'll be both 10 millimeter 
We won't need those guys until we go back on. There will be there will be these two plugs right here, and then this thing. This thing just pushes right into there. So you just pop it off. You can turn it to where it's kind of formed that way. And this is wired in, but these clips will still be there. So you take this guy, take them two out of there. So that's that. They've still got a wire to the fan. Um, and then you'll need to pull this hose off. Mine's got uh, a newer hose. Sometimes for me, it's easier to pull it off of this side. We'll try it with that. Okay. So we'll just take the old flat screwdriver, which is the most horrible creation is one of these with a flat screwdriver. If you've got a nut driver, these are way better with, with that. And if you want to replace hoses or any clamps, right now it's time to do it. And I'll probably replace this clamp, maybe. This hose is kind of soft. I might cut my hand. So these are hard to get off right here. You can see why. So they're just that straight shot. If these are a lot more stiff, those are pretty hard to get off there. So if you got a newer hose, you may fight that one. It, to me, it seems like it comes off easier on the other side if it's a stiffer hose. So, all right, let's get ready to pull the radiator. All right. That's pretty much it. So, Take all these. Maybe. That one broke. So that one evidently was leaking already. So it broke. All right, AutoZone broke my antifreeze. But, all right, so you just take the 10 millimeters. I'll put some new ones on it. So, if you have a socket and it gets stuck like it, you can put you a screwdriver or hit it with something. Uh, just like your bolt stuck in there, you can knock it out like that if you ever have that issue. But, so, So I've got my Mishimoto radiator. I'll take my stock fan shroud. Try to line it up here. I got uh, the rusty bolts. I'm going to take them out. I got a handful of um, bolts I found in my bolt bin that ain't rusted up. And then you, they should line up. Should anyhow. all we've done is I just went ahead and put all the bolts in and here's our uh, just took our overflow back up the slipper on there then I got some decent 10 millimeters remember this is an aluminum radiator so you don't have to go crazy and there's a drain right there so you don't want to Start putting everything in until you check that these are tight, which are loose. So check both of them. And I 
and make sure you got all your bolts good and tight. Yes, they are. All right, our overflow's on. We'll make sure those are good and snug. Pull off this bottom one because your bottom radiator holes will go there. Your sensor on your um, factory radiator will actually live right there. So that's where your sensor will be on your factory one. And then your drain will be right there on this side. So, all right, we're ready to go in. Okay. So, just kind of cautiously check over everything as you're ready to set it in. Now this is an aluminum one, so just try to be careful with it. I mean, it's not super easy to damage, but you don't want to go to beats and all that and try to make it fit, you know. Then on the bottom, you'll have these little rubber feet that those set in. And you'll know that you got them. It'll actually, the top's where they set. If it didn't land in those, or in those little holes, those wouldn't set down flush. Cool. All right, here, so we take our little, pretty much just do everything in reverse. Put your little tabs on them, little keepers. Get your 10 millimeters. You may have to adjust it to where where you want it. You may have to adjust the actual piece to the actual keeper. Um, because these are a little different. These radiators ain't 100% you know, stock or whatever. But they'll be close. Um, so get your little tin started there. Find the impact, whatever it is with it. There it is. So, snug there. Alright, I'm going to change this clamp. I got one this size. Let me see if I got a clamp this size. I may not have one, but I'll, I'll dig. Alright, so I didn't have a clamp, but what I will do, I've got a quarter inch drive socket and ratchet. And so instead of using that flat screwdriver and fighting this thing, put a little more slack in it. Take this top grommet off. And like I said, these are pain right here, so if it's a new hose, it may not go on just like it should. You may have to, it works better for me taking it from that side. If, if it's a new hose, it seems like it slides on better. But there's actually a silicone spray to lubricate these and make, make them move slide on better and stuff. So those, let me get this down off the side here where it's not sticking up. You want her good and snug. As long as it's behind that uh, wedged out piece, you should be good. And then we have our two plugs. Let's roll our vent back over. Push our vent back in. Hook the plugs up. Figure out which one's which. Well, we had it right to start with. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. And this one was broken. Alright, we'll have to zip tie that together or something. Okay. So we're done on top. So we'll let the hood down, raise it up, and we'll put the bottom uh, hose on. And we'll check our drain plugs and make sure they're getting tight. Then we'll come back up and we'll fill her up. So, all right, let's uh, 
Raise the cone. Okay, so I left the vice grips on because it's a squeeze top clamp. And so we'll just push our hose back on. It should go right on. Okay, so all right, the problem we got is the plastic sitting too far down. So we're gonna have to loosen all the tins and shift that up, the plastic itself, and that'll allow that hose to slide on and be able to slide that clamp down. It's just set down too far. So I'm loosening these up, push it up, pull that down, and then I'll snug up both of the fittings and the drain. And See, this is where your sensor would go, but we're running uh, electric fans on this car, so we won't have to put that sensor in. So I just tighten these plugs on both sides, put the hose on, ready for coolant after I adjust the shroud. But, all right, here we go. All right, I'm about to wrap it up. The IS300 now has the Mishimoto radiator. I've got the Subaru. I end up having to repo it. If you remember when I did the video on the um, Subaru wagon where I did the hay gaskets and stuff. Um, it's going to need some tie rod ends or something of that nature. Um, it's got a rattle to it. I think it might be an exhaust, like a, a cover or something. They may have drug it or something. But I, the tires are going flat. They're newer tires. I th I, I'm thinking about new tires for this car. I can't remember. Um, it definitely needs clean. My daughter's actually been driving it for a while while I was working on her car. But I got it done. Um, so yeah, pretty productive day. My rollback's outside running, so I'm going to call it a, a day and be done for today or whatever. But um, yeah, went pretty smooth on the IS300. Had a lot of company today. Art picked up uh, an engine. Me and him traded around on. Um, and he got another transmission and uh, another motor. Uh, a couple things he picked up, so clean some stuff out of my way for the Honda stuff. But I'm getting another, we'll talk more about it, but I'm getting some more, I may do some Honda stuff for a minute. Uh, that was my forte back in the day, so we may do a little bit of that and kind of enjoy the Honda game for a minute. So, all right, stay tuned. All right, here we go. I'm feeling high